and here's our review video for Module 1, Topic C. In this topic, we built on all the work we've done with arrays um, to look at some special properties of multiplication. Here we see an array that has four groups of three. Um, that's the normal way we, that we would look at this one. And we can rewrite that as four times three. And if we count by threes, count with me, 3, 6, 9, 12, we see that 4 times 3 equals 12. Now we're going to look at something very special that has to do with multiplication. If I rotate my array like this, now I had 4 groups of 3, but I have something else now. What I have is 3 groups of 4. It's the same array, but it's turned on its side. And we write that as multiplication, as 3 times 4. Um, and we can again see, if we count by 4s, count with me, 4, 8, 12, that we still have 12. So we see that 3 4s is the same as 4 3s. And this has a special name. This is called the commutative property. Think ahead for a second. What would you call this array? I'd call it five groups of two, or five twos. And what's the multiplication expression for it? It's five times two. Now, let's count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So we see that five times two equals ten. Now what's going to happen if we rotate it? If I rotate it all the way to its side like this, we don't have five twos anymore. What do we have? I say it's two fives, or two groups of five. Let me write that as multiplication as what? I say two times five. And let's count by fives. Five, ten. So again, we see that with the commutative property, what I also call the any order property, then multiplication. We can change the order of the factors and still get the same product. We looked at one last special property um, that we can use to help us with complex multiplication problems. Um, what we're going to be looking at is actually called the distributive property. Whoa, that's a big array. Um, instead of dealing with all seven groups of three simultaneously, I can chunk this out a little bit, like so. Now I have four groups of three and three groups of three. And I can find their totals separately then add them back together. So up here, I have 4 times 3. And if we count by 3's, 3, 6, 9, 12, we see that that is 12. And down here, I have 3 groups of 3, or 3 times 3. And if I count again by 3's, 3, 6, 9, I see that that's 9. Now, multiplication has this very special property. If I if I take those two partial products, I can add them back together to find the total product. So this is going to look a little funny, but just bear with me. We started with 7 times 3. And I am saying that that is the same as 4 times 3. I put it in parentheses to show that it's one step, plus 3 times 3. And again, I'm going to put that in parentheses to show that it's own step. its own step. Not as crazy as it looks when you get that matched up against the array. So now I know that 7 times 3 equals 12, that's 4 times 3, plus 9, that's 3 times 3. And so that tells me that 7 times 3 equals 21. This is a very special property called the distributive property, and we can use it with 
any sort of multiplication problem where we're using an array like this. It's very helpful when we're dealing with complex numbers or numbers that are hard to multiply like sevens. Um, let's try one more and then we'll stop. Here we have a 6 by 4 array. It's 6 4s. Um, I'm going to chunk it again. I'm going to chunk it here. So I have 4 groups of 4 and 2 groups of 4. So what I can do now is because this is 4 times 4 and this is 4 times fix that 4 times 2 I know because of what I just showed you that 6 times 4 sorry I'm wiggling around too much there 6 times 4 equals 4 times 4 plus 2 times 4 so let's solve these. If I count by fours, count with me. 4, 8, 12, 16. So I know that this equals 16 plus, well, let's come back over here. Count with me. 4, 8. So it's 16 plus 8. Um, I can use any kind of side math I want to help me solve that, or I can count on. And I discover that 6 times 4 equals 24. I hope that's helpful, and please let me know if you have any questions.